Well, praise the Lord. Greetings in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it because God is a great God. God has eyes that can be everywhere, and His eyes are upon you. Yes, you. His eyes are upon you. I know that God has a word for you today. It is not by chance, not even by accident that you have turned on to this channel, but because you have a divine appointment with the God of heaven, the one who created the universe and the one in whose hands belong all power and dominion. Is He has eyes that can see, he has ears that can hear, and he has hands that are not too short that they cannot reach you in the midst of your situation that he cannot make a way of escape in that situation that you thought was inescapable. Today I bring love and greetings from our ministry, the Greater Love Christian Center situated in, a, in McBean and also in Aruka. Our Sunday morning services begin at 8 o'clock in McBean, 8.30 in Aruka. And God is doing tremendous things and we have our intercessors praying for you. You are special to God. You are important. In fact, that's why we are on the air, to be a blessing to you and to bring encouragement to you. Today, I want to read from the New Testament, the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 22, reading verses 31 and 32. And it says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, that your faith will fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Jesus was speaking to Simon Peter on the same night in which he was betrayed. He was breaking bread with his disciples and sharing with them many things that were about to happen and he was preparing them for the events that lay ahead. He told them that he would be imprisoned and he would be falsely accused and Peter didn't want to believe. He said, no, no, master, don't, don't say so. He said, but you know what? I will die for you. I will go to prison for you. You know, nobody could come against you. And Jesus said something very strange. He didn't say, well, thank you, Peter. He said, Simon, Simon, which was Peter's other name. He said, Satan wants to have you and to sift you as wheat. I want to tell you today, today that we have an enemy who is real and his name is Satan. The Bible says he is the thief that comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. And just as Jesus said to Simon, he wants to sift you as wheat, I want you to know that the problems, the situations, the trials, the testings, the sicknesses, the family situations that you have been encountering really is an attempt of the enemy Satan to sift you like wheat, to discourage you, to cause you not to have faith in God, to become so worried and despondent, to make you unhappy. That's his will, to steal, to kill, and to destroy everything that is important and precious in your life. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, I want to read a couple of verses very quickly. The apostle is saying to us from verse 6, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that you he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. What was the apostle saying? He is also saying exactly what Jesus said. The enemy roams about as a roaring lion. The good news is he's a lion that has lost his teeth, that has been declawed. He cannot really hurt you 
unless you give him room to do so. Why? Because Jesus has already conquered him. The Bible says he has conquered death, hell, and the grave. He has conquered even the last enemy, which is death. Every evil thing that we see around us is a manifestation of the works of the devil. But he has been conquered. The reason you may say, the, well, how come we see so much evil in the world? Because many do not have the understanding that you are receiving today. That Satan roams about as a roaring lion. He speaks lies to the hearts of men. And when they believe and act upon those lies, we see so much evil manifested in the world today. But when we now have the revelation that Jesus has conquered him, and that by faith in Jesus Christ, we can stand against him. The Bible says, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Jesus also said in the book of Luke chapter 10, he said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. He has given to us by faith in him the power to stand against the works of sickness, disease, the evils. You know, that's why he said, throughout the scripture you will hear, he continually says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Fear not, be of good cheer. Why is he saying that? He's saying that because all of our enemies have been conquered, we don't have to be afraid anymore. But we can trust in a God who cannot and will not fail. A God who has promised to be with you, to deliver us from our enemies, to heal us in the time of sickness, to be with us in the, in the midst of the storm. He is our very present help in trouble. So the Bible says Satan is real. And I want to say to you, not believing in him, not believing that he is real is not going to make him go away and it's not going to stop him from trying to come against you and trying to hurt your family and trying to break up your home and trying to cause you to lose your job or attack you financially and have you in a difficult place. He is real and once we can acknowledge that he is real, you know, one of the strategies of warfare always is to locate your enemy. Maybe there are some of you out there, you have thought that your enemy was that neighbor who was giving you problems or that person on the job who has made your life difficult. Maybe it might be your spouse because you have quarrels every day and you have seen these people as your enemies. No, no, no. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We are in a wrestling match, but it is not with human beings, but with demonic forces that operate through human beings because they don't know better. When Satan tells someone, why don't you go and make trouble for someone? He thinks, well, those are the thoughts in my mind and maybe that person deserves to have trouble. So really, if we are fighting the wrong enemies, we will continue to fight every day of our lives. But when we realize who the true enemy is and we understand that if Jesus Christ is Lord of our lives, that by faith in him, we can resist the devil. We can speak to our mountains Jesus said in the book of Mark chapter 11, he said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall be able to speak to your mountains and say, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And that mountain has to obey. We were created for dominion on the earth. When you read the book of Genesis, when God created the man, he said, I have, I'm now giving you dominion on the earth. When the first man and the first woman sinned, they lost dominion. But through Jesus Christ, when we accept him into our hearts as Lord and Savior, and we begin to live by the word of God and have fellowship and relationship with our heavenly Father, we are now translated from being servants to being sons of God. And dominion is restored. I remember some years ago I was driving down to church one Sunday morning and the rains came down so heavily and my children were in the car and it was so heavy I could not even see in front of the vehicle. I did not know which part of the road I was driving and my children became afraid and they said, Mommy, you can't see, you don't know where you are going. I said, okay, 
But thank God for Jesus, we have power. And in the name of Jesus, I took authority over the rain. I commanded the clouds to hold back. And do you know, in a split second, that rain ceased. I'm talking about, as they say in local language, bucket a drop to no rain. And I was able to drive safely to church. I'm saying this to say to you, we were created to have dominion on the earth over the creations of God. And it comes through our faith in Jesus Christ. That's why he said, if you believe in me, that greater am I who live in you than anything that is in the world, then you shall have power to pray about your situations, to stand upon the promises of God that are yea and amen, that are settled in heaven. God's word will never return to him void. In fact, in the book of Hebrews, it says that though heaven and earth should pass away, that everything that can be shaken will be shaken. But the one thing that cannot be shaken is God's word. It is sharper and more powerful than any two-edged sword. It can pierce to the dividing asunder of bone and marrow, soul and spirit. It discerns the thoughts and intents of the heart. So I want to say to you, trust in the word of God. Not only the written word, but the living word who is Jesus Christ. The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And that is Jesus Christ. He has conquered all of your enemies. There is absolutely nothing that you are going through today. No problem, no enemy that you are facing that has not already been defeated. I want to say to you, if you have never had a personal experience with Jesus Christ, you have been missing out your whole life. A life in Christ is a life of victory, a life of blessing, a life of uncommon favor, a life of peace that passes all understanding and joy unspeakable and full of glory. And if you would believe in him, the Bible says, for God so loved the world, that means every human being, regardless of your religious background, your creed, your race, your social standing. If you believe in Jesus, you shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And Jesus said, you will have the abundant life. So I pray that you have received this word. I pray right now that you will say a simple prayer, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the son of God. You died for my sins. And today I ask you to come into my heart, be my Lord and savior, and help me to overcome every situation. Thank you for life everlasting. I trust that this word has challenged your heart and it has brought re uh, revelation and understanding that will help you to get on your way to victory and to your best life ever in Jesus Christ our Lord. I want to say thank you for listening. God bless you. You can call any of the numbers on the screen if you need someone to pray with you or for further information about our ministry. God bless you.